Grace and peace, uh, beloved St. Lucans. I want to talk to you today about the uh, call process and uh, my time at St. Luke. As you all have heard, um, the candidate that we were pretty sure was going to uh, be brought to you for a vote uh, and call uh, declined to continue in the process. It was a disappointment to us, but I want you to know that when the ministry board and the call committee met together the Monday after we learned this, I was so impressed with our leadership. They listened to each other. They were honest with each other and always keeping you, our members, in mind in the conversation, wanting to do their best for you, for us, for our church. It made me confident in the leadership. We shared what we learned. We improved the process. We were able to uh, link the ministry board with the call committee uh, by adding um, Mark Gudecki to the call committee. And I just want you to know and hear from me that I believe we are in good hands. And as we heard Sunday uh, from the pulpit, our bishop said that he would probably have some names to us by the end of this week. So I just want you to feel like the Holy Spirit is watching over us and continuing to guide this process. Second, there's been some of you asking about me and uh, am I going to stay and what on what basis am I continuing to lead as the pastor, the interim pastor. And I want you to know that I will continue in my role as a one quarter time pastor uh, and that that will include through Easter, uh, most of almost all of Holy Week, I'll be in the pulpit, uh, still two times a month as well. Starting in May, preaching, uh, leading worship uh, once a month. But every Wednesday will be my office day. Uh, I will do the chapel for our children, our school, um, I will continue these Wednesday uh, video messages. I will continue to meet with the ministry board and other uh, boards as needed. I will continue to be a part of the Thursday morning Bible study and our Sunday evening uh, coffee break. So I hope that uh, I will help provide the kind of stability that we need uh, to Get ready for our next pastor. I continue to serve with much joy. Uh, Janet and I and Rachel have come to love you, and um, we will. Uh, we will. We're going to hang in there together. And this book, Whistling in the Dark, by Frederick Buechner, one of my favorite authors over the years, um, has some wonderful uh, kind of devotion-like spiritual uh, thoughts. And I want to share with you two of them today. Um, the first one, in fact, is called Lent. In many cultures, there is an ancient custom of giving a tenth of each year's income to some holy use. For Christians to observe the 40 days of Lent is to do the same thing with roughly a tenth of each year's days. After being baptized by John in the River Jordan, Jesus went off alone into the wilderness where he spent 40 days, asking himself the question what it meant to be Jesus. During Lent, Christians are supposed to ask, one way or another, what it means to be themselves. If you had to bet everything you have on whether there is a God or whether there isn't, which side would you put your money on and why? 
When you look at your face in the mirror, what do you see in it that you most like and what do you see in it that you most deplore? If you had only one last message to leave to the handful of people who are most important to you, what would it be in 25 words or less? Of all the things you have done in your life, which is the one you would most like to undo? Which is the one that makes you happiest to remember? If there are any person in the world or any cause that if circumstances called for, you would be willing to die for, what would it be? If this were the last day of your life, what would you do with it? To hear yourself try to answer questions like these is to begin to hear something, <coughs> not only of who you are, but of both what you are becoming and what you are failing to become. It can be a pretty depressing business all in all, but if sackcloth and ashes are at the start of it, something like Easter may be at the end. The other one I want to share with you is called Today. Today. It is a moment of light surrounded on all sides by darkness and oblivion. In the entire history of the universe, let alone in your own history, there has never been another just like it, and there will never be another just like it again. It is the point to which all your yesterdays have been leading since the hour of your birth. It is the point from which all your tomorrows will proceed until the hour of your death. If you were aware of how precious it is, you could hardly live through it. Unless you are aware of how precious it is, you can hardly be said to be living at all. This is the day the Lord hath made, says the 118th Psalm. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, or weep and be sad in it for that matter. The point is to see it for what it is because it will be gone before you know it. If you waste it, it is your life that you're wasting. If you look the other way, it may be the moment you've been waiting for always that you're missing. All other days have either disappeared into darkness and oblivion or not yet emerged from it. Today is the only day there is. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so grateful that we're in this together.